All right, so we're going to go over how to solve gas equations now. Um, I'm not going to give you all of the gas equations, but I'll give you the ones we're going to test you on. So all in all, I think there are six, so six gas equations. Uh, when you take your quiz, make sure you have your gas equation sheet that was posted with the homework. That'll help you out a lot. Okay, so first one we're going to talk about is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. So this is a really easy one. So this is really... addition rule. All right. So it just says the sum of the partial pressures is equal to the total pressure. So if you look right here, you're simply just adding up the parts to equal the whole. So if I gave you, all right, and if you look at this picture example, if I added up all these parts, it would equal the whole. All right. So if I gave you an example here, a gas contains helium, oxygen, and nitrogen. The partial pressure of oxygen is 160. All right, so if this is 160, and hydrogen is 7.6 millimeters of mercury, uh, what is the pressure of N2 is located at sea level? So um, we have to find N2. Here's an important thing. So sea level will come up over and over again. You'll see that these are in millimeters of mercury. And I told you in the last cast that sea level has a pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so 760 millimeters of mercury minus my partial pressures. So these two plus N2 would have to equal 760. All right, so that's essentially how you do it. If you did the problem, um, you should get N2 is equal to 592. Okay, so that's a pretty easy one. That should give you enough to get going on that. So Boyle's Law. All right, so we start talking about uh, the next three laws, or next four laws. You'll notice that we have ones and twos. So the one as a subscript equals the initial condition. Oops. And the two subscript equals a final condition. All right, so these type of laws require that you have initials and final condition. So Boyle's law states that pressure and volume are inverse or related. So if you look at the picture here, if I half the volume, I'll double the pressure, right? So I half the volume, I double the pressure. Remember, because there are more collisions per unit time. All right, so I will give you another example here. Remember, our formula here is going to be P1. P1 is equal to P2, P2. So I have a 10 liter vessel. Oh, that's my V1. So if I want to keep it consistent here, let me do my P1 first. 2.5 ATM is P1, P1 is 10.0 liters is equal to, now it says what's the new pressure, so I'm just going to keep that as P2 because I don't know it now, and V2 is 3.00 liters. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to isolate my P2, so I'm going to move my 3 liters. liters. Right, so if you were doing the old algebraic way, you'd be multiplying by 1 over 3 liters, and then 1 over 3 liters, right? So we did that to both sides. And if I do this over here, I should get somewhere around 8.3 ATM. Okay. So that's how you do that. So make sure you substitute everything into your equation. 
uh, before you solve, and that'll make it a lot easier. All right, Charles Law, right, states that um, volume and temperature are directly related. All right, so if I keep pressure constant, right, in order to, if I increase the temperature to keep pressure constant, I have to increase the volume to allow a longer time for collisions. Okay, so um, you'll see here uh, with this, if I increase the temperature, I have to increase the volume. Okay, so let me give you an example of that. Remember our formula is V1 T1 is equal to V2 T2. All right. So I'll just take and I'll substitute in. So V1, so 20.0 liters, and my T1. Now you'll notice it says 25 degrees Celsius, but I have to convert this to Kelvin, as I told you last time. So it has to be converted to Kelvin. So remember, this is Celsius plus 273. OK, so you have to do that to get to Kelvin. So if I add 273 to here, I'll get 298 Kelvin as my starting. All right, I get V2 because it says what's the new volume. I'm looking for V2, so I'll keep it there. And then I'll get um, 323 Kelvin. And that's just the 50 plus 273. All right, so once I have that, let me go ahead and move this up here. Right. So I could have done that with the 323 over 1 on both sides if you're doing the algebraic way, or I just move it. So from the future, I'll just move it, and you know that's what I'm doing. Uh, and when you get to this, you should get uh, 21.7 liters. Okay, so we're around there. Okay, Lusak's law, right? So if I keep the volume constant, if I increase temperature, I should increase pressure because I get more collisions per unit time. All right. So you'll see here if I take my ice bath that my boiling, right, I should get more pressure because I have more collisions. All right. Okay, so if I give you an example here, all right. So I have a gas in a fixed container because my volume is constant. That's what fixed means. All right. So let me just remind you of your formula. P1. Oops. Let me put that. P1 T1 is equal to P2 T2. All right. So I'm looking for the new pressure. Okay, so I have, uh, where's my P1? My gas at 273 K, container at 1 to ATM. So I have asked, what is the new pressure in KPA? Now my initial pressure is in ATM, so you have your choice. You can fix it at the beginning or fix it at the end. I'm gonna fix it at the beginning, because I told you yesterday that one ATM is equal to 1014. Kilopascals. That's our sea level value. All right, so I'm going to use that over here. So P1 is going to be 101.3 kPa. Uh, P1 over T1. So T1 was 273 k. I don't have to do anything to it because it's already in k. All right, so I get my P2 and my 500. So I'll go ahead and move this so I can isolate the variable I want to solve for. And then when I solve that, I should get 186 kPa. So I should get something like that. So remember, my advice to you is assemble the formula first. Find your variables, plug them in where they go, and then isolate what you want to solve for. 
This seems to be the simplest way to do things. All right, combined gas law, right? So if I look at the combined gas law, it combines the three that we've already talked about, right? So I uh, P1, V1, that was boils, right? I have V1 over T1, that's Charles, right? And I have my P over my T, and that's gay loose X, okay? So uh, all of those, it just makes the combined gas law, all right? So let me give you an example of the combined gas law. But you'll notice that each one of these has two conditions in it. So let's remind ourselves of our um, formulas before we start. So I have P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. All right. So I'm looking for the new pressure, so I'm going to be looking for P2. So P1, so at sea level, right? Notice I say, what's the new pressure in millimeters of mercury? So it's at sea level. So for P1, I'm going to use 760 because that's our pressure constant at sea level. My V1, uh, 3,000 milliliters. I'm just going to shorten that to 3 liters because there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. My T1, so my initial temp is 20 degrees Celsius. Remember, I'm going to make it to Kelvin, so I have to add 273, so I'll have 293 Kelvin is equal to P2. That's what I want to find. My V2 is 1.5 liters, and my T2 is 323 Kelvin, because I have to convert that to Kelvin again. All right, so let's move things. So I'm going to 1.5 liters. Right, I'll move there. My 323 Kelvin. I'll have to move up there. So I'll multiply the whole top, then I'll divide by the whole bottom. And I should get 1680. So that's how you solve those kind of problems. So the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law um, is to calculate for missing variables in a gas. Remember there are four variables, right? So the four variables were P, V, N, and T, right? So if you look at this equation here, this also has R. So R is the ideal gas equation, or ideal gas constant. And what that does is it, it corrects for differences uh, in pressure, temperature, and volume. So a um, couple things to know. Um, so gases that behave like ideal gases as long as they satisfy the conditions of the kinetic molecular theory. So, because I'll probably throw it on a quiz, there are two exceptions to ideal gas. So the first is very cold. Because at very cold temperatures, ideal gases don't move rapidly. And very high pressures. Because at very high pressure, the space between the molecules is not great enough. So those are two exceptions to ideal gas behavior. So at those uh, two conditions, you couldn't use this equation. Okay? So on your... Um, gas law 
uh, sheet that I posted for you with the homework, um, you'll find the ideal gas constants. Okay, uh, the two most common constants we use. here and right here and you'll notice that the way that you tell which one to use is by the unit of pressure right uh, volume has to be in liters so this has to be in liters right uh, your temperature has to be in Kelvin and your N has to be in moles right uh, your pressure you can use different pressures as long as you use different R's all right, so let me give you an example. All right, so I have a 25, oh, here we go, PV equals N RT. So first I write the equation, because then I have to set, substitute variables into my equations. All right, so PV equals NRT. Sample gas at 25 liters. 25 liters. All right, now 1.5 atmosphere, that's my pressure. How many moles? So I don't know N, so I'm just going to leave that as N. I'll leave a space for my R. I am at 27 degrees Celsius, so if I add 273 to that, I get 300. Okay. So what R to use? So remember, this is an ATM, so if I come back over here, because it's an ATM, I have to use this one right here. Okay? Alright, so I use 0 0.0821 um, uh, ATM liters. You know, it has a unit for everything that's there. Okay, so I'm going to start moving things. Okay? So this is really over one, remember? So I'll move my 0 0.0821 ATM liters Kelvin and my 300K. All right. So if you look at this, right? With this, I can cancel out my Kelvins, right? I can cancel out my ATMs, I can cancel out my liters, and what I'm left with is moles, and since that'll flip when I come over here. All right, so if I solve all that now, I'll come out with 1.5 moles. All right, that's how you solve the basic gas problems. Um, in your homework and for your quiz, when you're trying to figure out, by the way, which gas law to use, you figure out what the variables are and what's constant. Right? If you only have pressure and volume and variables, you're going to say, oh, if I only have pressure and volume, right? or if I have a constant temperature and I only have pressure and volume, it's going to be Boyle's law. If my variables are only volume and temperature and I have a constant pressure, then it's going to be Charles. So that's the way you work it. If my variables are in pressure and temperature, but I've got a constant volume, right, it's going to be gain Lussacs. And if I have all three of these and I haven't changed the volume, it's going to be that. If I have one set of conditions, it's got to be ideal. Okay, so I hope this helped you out, and I'll talk to you soon.